Tonight I want to talk about emanations. In doing so, we'll go deeper into some things we've already discussed. As we've seen, there are different ways to think of God. An ultimate ground of existence falls into this box over here. Because it's impersonal, it's not Krishna or Jesus, or whatever. And it also is imminent. Now, the virtue of an imminent God is that you don't need a revelation, that there's the possibility of discovering that God, because that God is imminent in the universe. A transcendental God, totally beyond the universe, might need to reveal himself. And that, in fact, I believe is uh, the view behind the Bible, that God had to reveal himself because he transcends the, the, the natural world. So if you have a God that is impersonal and imminent, a virtue is that any species might feel comfortable calling that God. As we've seen, there are, are mystics, there are people who experience the ultimate ground of existence as light, as what they would call divine light. And we have an analogy where ultimate ground of existence is like the light that is projected onto a movie screen, and the objects of the world, people, places, and things, are like the images on a movie screen. And so that's a way of thinking that could be described and has been described as emanations. The idea is that, well, let's just read this first. It says in various mystical traditions, it's also religious and philosophical traditions, an emanation is a being, an entity, or a force that is a manifestation of God or ultimate reality. The next, this one goes into more detail. Emanationism, all things are derived from first reality. And I think we could say that all things were derived, are that today derive from the energy that existed after the Big Bang. This says uh, emanationism is opposed to creationism, and it is, because creationism is like God creating the universe, like we create a painting. It's something external to God. It says it's also opposed to materialism. I'm not sure that's true. Maybe materialism, in a strict sense, doesn't, pot any, doesn't posit anything that's ontologically ultimate. But I guess it depends what version of materialism you're talking about. I do want to point out that our usage of ultimate God of being has been to talk about the existence of material things. But there's another sphere. There's the mental sphere. 2 plus 2 plus 4 is something that exists, but it doesn't exist physically. It doesn't exist anywhere in space. And some years ago, I read this book. And in this book, uh, the author describes what he calls the mindscape. This is an interesting idea that... Just like when we walk through a landscape, we see trees and rocks that were already there before we entered the landscape. The idea here is that the mindscape has all the possible thoughts. And we don't create thoughts so much as encounter them as our mind travels through the mindscape. Interesting book, interesting thought. Getting back to emanations, in the past, various authors have described their theory of emanations. This is, it's hard to read here, it says on the side, Plotinus. Plotinus was a philosopher around 400 AD in the tradition of Plato, who had lived some centuries before him. So his philosophy is called Neoplatonism. And he has the one up here, the all and the one. And then he derives from that God, and here is the world of ideas, and other things we haven't spoken about, the world, soul, the cosmos, matter, etc., etc. There are a few more examples of emanation theories I want to show you. This one I won't get into, but here is the absolute up here, and down here is the earth. Here's another one. Now, uh, I believe Augustine was familiar with this and might have even originated it. I don't know, but Augustine talks about the vegetative soul, the animal soul, and the rational soul. And you'll notice that this has God, the unknowable essence. That, that essence implies to me Godhead, and as if the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are flowing out of the Godhead. But the Godhead is the ultimate ground of being of God, I suppose, if you want to think of it that way, uh, of the Christian God, Godhead. Anyway, and here's another theory of emanation, or another diagram. You'll notice non-dual divine ground is up here. And there, I won't get into detail. These are just some examples of emanation theories. Now, science kind of has its own diagram of emanation. Now here, this is meant to be temporal. 
there was the Big Bang, and then energy coalesced into matter, and then uh, some matter became alive, and some matter uh, developed intelligence to a certain degree, and then culture. But you can view this ontologically, right at this very moment. Culture depends on minds. Minds depend on life. As far as we know, we've never seen a disembodied mind. Life depends on matter. We've never seen an immaterial life. And matter depends on energy. So science has, a, here's another expression of its um, emanation theory, if you will. Down here we have the ultimate ground of existence, and emanating from that is quarks, and emanating from the quarks are protons and nucleus, etc., etc., molecules, and this is a molecule of water, so it's considered as water. And by the way, as we saw, I just want to reiterate this, because then we're leading on to something new. Water is a component object. It has components. Two hydrogen atoms, one oxygen atom. It's a component ob object with relative existence. Those objects have to have the right relation to each other for water to exist. If this molecule could exist, I don't know if it could, it has the same components but arranged differently. It would not be water. A better example is the English word R, A-R-E, has three components, the letter A, R, and E. But it has relative existence because those letters have to be in the right relation to each other for the word R to exist. Rearrange them and you get the word ear, E-A-R, an entirely different entity. Those two entities, those two words, have the same components, but they have different relation. Those components have a different relation to each other. So to summarize, we've talked about component entities and relative existence, and dependent existence kind of derives from these two. If you have component entities, if you have a component entity, its existence depends on the existence of the components. And if they have relative existence, its existence depends on the components maintaining the proper relation. So the word R, A-R-E, has a dependent existence. It depends on those three letters existing and keeping the right relation to each other. But I want to focus on action. Now, in a sense, we can think of anything as an action. An action of the ultimate ground of existence, the light moving on the movie screen. We saw earlier the idea of a fist as an action. Fold your fingers and thumb into your palm and you create a fist. As long as you maintain that act of holding your fingers and thumb in the proper position, the fist exists. Open your hand and the fist disappears. Well, what does this all have to do with something new? This has all been kind of review aside from the theory of emanation, but that just goes deeper into what we've uh, discussed. But I want to apply this, and I will apply this just conceptually. You'll, you'll see what I mean. This is sodium. Sodium is a metal, silver, silverish metal. Put sodium in water, and it re reacts violently. This is chlorine. Chlorine is a yellowish, greenish gas. It's poisonous. As a matter of fact, it was used in the First World War in chemical warfare. Put sodium and chlorine together, and you get table salt. I mean, you have to combine them chemically, but you get something which is not a metal, which easily combines with water, which is not poisonous. Now, that's kind of odd, if you think about it. If you think of sodium and chlorine as things, how can they combine to create salt? Now, of course, there's a scientific explanation. Sodium has a spare electron in its outer shell. Chlorine would like an electron to complete its outer shell. They share the electron, and you get salt molecule. But nonetheless, okay, this is fine. I'm not saying it's wrong in any way. But still, if you sit back and think about it, if you think as the elements as things, it's rather strange and miraculous what they can do. But let's suppose we think of the elements as actions, as acts of ultimate ground of existence, as something that the light on the movie screen is doing. Oh, and I wanted to say that the sodium and the uh, chlorine combining to form salt is kind of like as strange as if you could combine a hammer and a rabbit to get a book. Kind of silly, but the idea is that how do you get the thing on the right-hand side of the equal sign from the two things on the left-hand side of the equal sign? They seem so dissimilar. But if you consider sodium and chlorine as acts, now here is an act of going around in a circle. And here is an act of going forward. 
combine those two acts, which is very easy to do, you just put a light on the uh, uh, rim of a bicycle wheel and you pedal the bicycle. And this is what the light does. This curve, mathematically called a cycloid, is the result of combining these two acts of going around and going forward. And it's very natural to say, oh yes, acts can combine. You can combine one act and another act together to get a third act, and it's very natural. This is going around, this is going forward, and this, by going around and forward, is following this path, which is neither circular nor straight, because it's going up and down at the same time as it's going forward. Not earth-shaking, but I think it's interesting that thinking of things as acts has, at least here, makes something that, if you thought about it, might seem very strange. It makes it seem very natural. I just want to close by saying a lot of what I'm doing in this channel comes from a book I wrote. And I also want to add that this channel is not about money, and this book is entirely free. You can go to this website, and it's available in several formats for download. If um, you're interested in what we're talking about, you might want to get the book because it goes into some things in more detail. And maybe it covers things that we'll never get to. I'm not finished doing these videos, so I don't know how far I'm going to get. But if you're interested, there it is. And thank you.